preview drawings before. Uh, this will also help you, I guess it will feed off each other. The fact you've done 3D, or 3D drawings by hand will help you here. The work you do here will help you understand 3D view, view drawing or 3 view drawings better. Um, first thing we're looking at here is your homework assignment. There are two drawings you're going to generate. The first one of which and the parts given to you. This part exists on OC.OK State. The second part does not. Um, so I could decide whether to make, have you make both parts or just have you or just give you the parts and have you make the drawing. So I kind of half and half. I uh, gave you one. I'll have you make the other part. So this is actually from a previous exam several semesters ago in, in the in the class. Um, so it's rather straightforward. I'm going to go over how to make this drawing today. I guess I'm going to lab to start that work. Also, you'll see on OCOK State, I've got quite a few things up this week. Uh, we go to week 10, drawings one. We have up top the drawings, parentheses, this is your homework. There's so many files, I want to make sure you knew what you had to do, what was optional, and what's extra credit. Uh, I've given you E-part drawings, both the rectangular part and the triangular one. Those are the, the E drawings. You can't really bring those straight into a drawing file, I don't believe. But uh, then the rectangular part, SLDPRT, that's the actual part that I have pulled up right here. This is given to you. I'm going to turn off the temporary axes so you can kind of see it. Uh, it looks kind of odd, but it's just a part that was created to test people's skill on the first exam. Because you'll see it requires several, several different types of operations. Um, so anyway, we can go straight between this and to a drawing. Also in the list of things this week, uh, going on down, we have a video uh, about drawings one. This was created by a TA last semester named Scott Hood. Um, I included the drawing that's referenced in the video, and also, or I guess that's the part, and then also the drawing that's referenced in the video. That's just to help you out if you want to have some more instruction. A lot of people have asked for uh, videos of these lectures. Three is an ideal case because it's not your homework. It's not my instruction repeated, but it's just another resource. So why not throw it up there and offer it to you guys for help? So if you get kind of lost on drawings, you want some more uh, instruction, Scott Hood recorded himself going through the example there. Uh, and then finally, last, we have a parts and extra credit, or parts and drawing extra credit opportunity. These are very simple parts, what I would call very simple. Um, this was last year's first drawing. Uh, exercise, you know, parts that were made like in the first week of class. Okay, so you'll just make these extremely simple parts and then create drawings of them. There's one up top and this little whistle looking thing down below. So this should be very elementary type uh, part design, but then you bring it in and uh, make drawings of that. So again, same as always, if you choose to do the extra credit, um, I believe this is worth five points again. If you do both entirely correctly, uh, just turn into that extra credit drop box and uh, you'll be good to go. I don't believe the extra credit that's been turned so far has been graded. The TAs are trying to you know, stay caught up on their primary day job, and then they'll grade the extra credit as they have the time. So if you've done it right, you should get the points by, uh, by the end of the semester. So that kind of describes what all is in the drop or not, the content area this week. Um, we're going to go basically over, you'll notice all these drawings are just parts. We're not going to get into assembly drawings until next week. We're not going to get into exploded views until next week. Just keep, keep things relatively straightforward gone ahead and kind of started on this, but I'll close that out because we've got to show you how to do this from scratch. If you already have the part open, say I just finished making this. I just did my exam, uh, made this part, and now I want to create a drawing of it. If you have something open, you can go to File, Make Drawing from Part. Um, if you don't have the part open, hopefully I remember where this is saved. Uh, Classroom User Downloads. All right. You can go to File, New, now we're on the third button here, drawings. Create a 2D engineering drawing, typically of a part or assembly. I'll click OK. The first thing comes up, it asks me what size of paper do I want to print out on? As you'd imagine, if you do things to a one-to-one -one scale in SOLIDWORKS and print it out right on the same size of paper that you told it you have, uh, one inch will be one inch on your paper. You should be able to sit there and measure the drawing, and it will be exactly one inch if your printer is configured right, if everything's set up. Um, there are two different there are official and unofficial paper sizes. Like if you have this checkbox like that says only show standard formats, that just shows like A, NC, both landscape and portrait. You get to B size paper. Just keep an eye, keep an eye on these sizes down here. Again, both landscape, those are landscape sizes. Some of them get pretty big, like 44 by 34. That's what you see people walking around with these big drafting papers. Printers have to have a plotter to print those out. But it's kind of handy sometimes if you need to diagram, uh, say, a bridge over Brimmer Lake. You want to have a big plot of it. Um, 
There's all these A zeros, those are kind of odd sizes. I mean, I think A4 is almost 8.5 by 11. That's a common mistake people will make. Uh, A4 isn't the paper you're looking for. Uh, your princess is in another castle or something like that. Uh, A basic is, is the landscape, nerds. Um, the portrait version of 8.5 by 11 is up there on top. So that's what we're looking for. If they don't show up, you go ahead and uncheck that box. Sometimes they're hidden by SolidWorks. In 2012, they wouldn't show up unless you uncheck it. Looks like they've changed that for 2013. So anyway, uh, good to go. We'll make a landscape. But actually, the drawings, if we look, let me pull this back up. Down here in the corner, it says size paper B. Down here, this size paper is A. So they're a little bit different. It has a scale for the global scale of the drawing. That's also important information to grab. Um, you remember when we talked about default tolerances? These aren't populated right now, but you easily could. Uh, Two-place decimal means plus or minus 100. You can type in 0 .01 there. Three-place decimal, plus or minus 1,000. You can change those how you like. Um, you can enter in your company name, the name of the title of the drawing, go over how to do all that. But the important thing, first of all, what size of paper do I want to use to make this guy? B. B size paper. Okay, so B. That is 17 by 11. I think it's, is that legal size or is that even bigger? Isn't legal still eight and a half wide? I think it's bigger. Yeah, this is pretty big. Anyway, it's 17 by 11. Uh, it comes up with a format. If the if this format block takes up the wrong proportion of the screen, you know you probably clicked the wrong size of paper. I just made that same mistake. So I used a size A paper, which is much smaller. See so yeah, this format block is really kind of the same, I guess you'd say pixel size, but it's diff much different sizes on the pieces of paper. Like the measurement measured length on a piece of paper, whether it's a giant plotter piece or a tiny piece of A paper will be the same size for the format. So use that as a cube. If that shows up weird, it shows up tiny in the corner, you know you click on something way, way, way too big. All right, we've got the basic drawing open. Nothing's on that. I will go and browse for the part that I want to make a drawing of. Well, there it is, rectangular part. That looks right. Just double click. It brings up the default view placement. Um, let's see, that one's going to be over here to the left. I'm going to reproduce this, so I click there once. And it's quite simple. SolidWorks can let you connect these views. Three view drawings always have to be projected the same scale in different directions from one another. And SolidWorks knows that. So up here, to the right, and to the bottom. That's pretty easy. And then finally I'll put an isometric view up here. There's not really a lot of room for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of place it, assuming I'll move it later. All right, so that's pretty slick. Um, once you bring these in, of course, SolidWorks already knows all the dimension informations. So information informations. Uh, so you just click Smart Dimension and say I want to know the length of that line. Okay, that's fine. I can do that. I can do this. I can do whatever dimension I want to click on. The same way you dimension it in uh, Sketcher is what you can do here. You just go to town. After they're made, you can come back in here and move the numbers around and make it you know, look better. You can change the type of handles, the decimal places things are printed to, um, all sorts of different things. Just keep in mind that it's, it's poor form to have dimensions overlapping. Uh, you want to keep things clean. Uh, the first exam you had, I think there's a two inch dimension that overlaps to the 2.65 inch dimensions. I got a lot of questions about that. You guys remember what I'm talking about on that lab exam? That was an example of poor dimensioning. I shouldn't have had those overlapping. Uh, it could have prevented some confusion. I know I'm a jerk, right? So uh, this isometric view, if we look at what we want, it's over here in the right corner. But SolidWorks says by default, so I, uh, let me move it. Whenever I, whenever I instantiated it, it, it would only let me make it on a pure diagonal. Um, in 2012, you probably you couldn't move that quite as fluently, but all right. So I'm dragging that over here. That looks good. One thing that's nice about these views, like right now, notice I have that isometric view selected. You can change the view style in any given view. Uh, it doesn't necessarily affect the other. I go to solid showing lines, solid without lines. I kind of think that's good for isometrics. You can also bring in pictures. If you have a company logo, it's this cool graphic. You can just drag and drop it in there and make it look neat. You could. Uh, do all sorts of things. Good question? No, no. you're just tired. Okay. Now, if we click on the master view, kind of like an assembly, the first thing you placed in was uh, was fixed in space. The first drawing view you drop in kind of becomes the master. Uh, this front view here. Um, if we click on that and we change it to view type, notice that it changes for all the subsidiary drawings. So in that case, it does affect others. But, but uh, if you click on one of the subsidiaries, change it, it does not propagate back up. So it's just an interesting way how things behave. 
I'm going to go ahead and change this back to how it was in the actual drawing. Let's check here. Yep. Hidden lines not showing, just visible lines. Looks great. Uh, one cool thing about drawings, like, say I need to put some detail in this region right here. I want to zoom in and present this larger view down beneath it. That's pretty easy. We should go to View Layout, Detail View. Uh, by, by default, it says, please sketch a circle to continue view curation. Well, okay, I'll just click over here, drag a bigger circle, and it makes it for me. I can just drag and place this wherever I want. Uh, so this is pretty slick stuff, and I hope you can see how much, it's gonna, how much time it's going to save you. Uh, notice it also puts this little tag in there. It's kind of overlapping. Just put detail A over here. Scale to 1. Yes? It's in draft view or in draft, uh, draft or uh, high detail, whatever. Ah, that was for threads. What he's talking about is when I click detail view, it says cosmetic thread deep, deep, uh, display. Uh, high quality or draft quality. Whenever you have like a threaded uh, bolt, threaded whatever, do you want the detailed view to show each individual thread, which would be high quality, or do you want to have a draft quality showing of threads, which is, well, it doesn't show every individual piece. So again, it's just a detail thing. As far as I know, that only applies to threading, um, so it shouldn't affect you a whole lot. But that, that's what it is. Okay. So that's detail A. I believe we also have a note. You can put notes in here by going to annotation. We'll do a lot more with this in next week's lab, but for now, just know you can click, mash that button, uh, click on something. Like in this case, I think we're, what is the note? Chamfer on top, not on bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna click here, put the note over there, and I can just type in. Chamfer here, whatever. Press enter, escape. And one thing's kind of annoying, uh, it's useful in assembly whenever it keeps the tool open to place another note. I don't like that it keeps the, uh, uh, excuse me, keeps the mating tool open so you can make another mate in assembly. It's not useful, you can just like sit here and click notes to your heart to your heart's content. I think that's kind of an awesome. But anyway, just make sure you get out of the tool. If you start clicking on things, it just places arrows everywhere. You can easily just click on something, press the delete key, and it goes away. All right, so covered dimensioning, covered notes. If you need to add another branch to a note, you can right click on the handle and, add so many options. Add branch, add branch. New branch. There we go, finally. So where I click on the on the single branch, now I can just point at two things. I can point over here as well with the same note. So you see, you notice in your drawing, this one, oh, that one right there has multiple branches. Holes stop after the surface, so it points to the hole, and also where the hole stops as well. Uh, that's a situation where you need to use multiple branched uh, arrows. Everything else you see is pretty basic dimension. Uh, that's zoomed in. Over here we have a section cut. This threw a lot of people for a loop on the first exam where I chopped the wheel in half and I showed like the hatched areas where we're cut through material, the non-hatched areas where we're cut through air. Uh, we're going to go over that right now. To make a section view, these are probably the most useful things you can do in a two-dimensional drawing to describe the internal shape of something. In fact, I'll probably just make some extra ones on this to be, to be neat about. Uh, section view, click that button, you mash it, and this has been revised in 2013, but uh, it might do nonetheless. Go ahead and start with the basic. I just want to drag this through. Basically, if you were going to take a knife to a loaf of bread, where you cut it through and you look at the profiles that exist inside of it. So I want to cut through, it was the third eye right there. That looks good. So I'll click OK. And now I can move this view around. And you see, I can change the size and dimension and everything. But everywhere it's hatched, it's cutting through solid material. So it's cutting through, it's not yet into this tall pillar. If I move this view B, if I can click on view B, over to here, notice that it gets all kind of oranged out. It says that view is not up to date. If this ever shows up over one of your drawing views, that means it's out of date. You need to refresh your sheet. Uh, so you just do that by mashing on the stoplight button up here. And now we see that we're actually cutting through this tall central pillar. You can see some of the little... Uh, the ball up there, these solid lines coming down through, the holes that pass through that uh, going all the way to the bottom. Uh, so this probably makes more sense now what the hatched regions mean. It's just what you're cutting through. I drag this back over to where I want it. Right about here. 
refresh it, and notice in the view that I'm trying to create, it only has this little circle. I don't want the entire section cut, I just want a portion of it. So in SOLIDWORKS, I can go to uh, Crop View. It says, I want you to draw a circle on how you want to crop it. Uh, but it, unlike the other tool, the Detail Tool View doesn't automatically draw a circle for you. So before I use Crop, I go to Sketch, I just put in a, any sort of shape I want, but I'll just use a circle again. I'll show that little region. Say OK. So now with that region kind of selected, see how it's blue? I'll say Crop View, and it's gone. Uh, crop view is one thing to be careful with because unless SOLIDWORKS makes me lighter again, you can't undo it. So if you make some nice view and you've got things exactly how you want, you crop it improperly, the only way to go back and try is to uh, delete that view and try again. Once it deletes that information, it's, it's gone. So you can just drag this over and you're good to go. Notice that every time you click on a particular view, you get lots of options over here. Most commonly are the display style. I can go to solid, I can do all this. We've already detailed that. But scale. Scale is something that's important on all these drawings. Sometimes you'll have one view that's a scale of 2 to 1, one other view will be 1 to 1, something might be 10 to 1. Uh, it can change throughout a sheet, though sometimes having the same scale is, is useful. Like, say I didn't want this so big. Let's make that a little bit uh, smaller. So I'll click on this detailed picture I made. I'll scroll down here to scale. I have several options. It's set to a custom scale by default because it's, it's a, a zoomed region. It's a set to a custom scale of 2 to 1, obviously to make it bigger. Uh, if I want to have it a little bit smaller, I can just click on that, and there's, there's some options. Uh, 3 to 2, that should be a little bit smaller. If I just want to do 1 to 1, is that in here? Yeah, it's 1 to 1. You go really tiny, it's like 1 to 16. Uh, you can change the scale all you want. Let's say I wanted something really odd, like uh, 3.2 to 1.7 or something stupid like that. Uh, you can use the sheet scale. That doesn't really do what I want because the sheet scale is defined as 1 to 1. We zoom in down here, whole sheet scale, 1 to 1. Um, you could use the parent scale, that's like for all the drawings that talk about having subsidiaries, those main three views that were kind of tied together, uh, it'll make sure that your right-handed view is always the same scale as the main view, or the front view. The top is the same as the front, the bottom is the same as the front, so on and so forth. Under custom scale, if you want something weird, click the drop-down menu, scroll all the way up to user defined. That's where you can type in something odd. So 3.7 uh, to... 1.5, there we go. Now scale is odd. But you can certainly do that. Um, that's probably going to show up on the exam, so take a note of that, do that in your homework. Know where to find user defined. So it's not just these options, you can always type in whatever you want. I'll go back to 2 to 1. I think as far as new information, that's all you need to know. I need to cover how to do a couple of things to the whole sheet. Like let's say you opened up a drawing, you had a gigantic part, like say a bridge. You want to print it out on 8 and a half 11 paper, but obviously you can't fit a bridge onto that in a scale of 1 to 1. Uh, SOLIDWORKS will make a guess what size you want to fit your part on there. Whatever, whatever part you open, it's going to kind of guesstimate what scale to put it at so it'll fit. But say you didn't like its choice. You can always right click, in some white space of the drawing, go to properties. You have several options. Um, you have sheet one, the default scales, how you can change it there, you can change it to one to two. You say okay, everything gets smaller. Everything that's tied to sheet scale. The reason that this didn't get smaller is because we've already set it as a custom scale, two to one. It stayed as we left it. Everything else is tied together with the sheet scale. Go back to that menu, right click, properties, same way all the time. You can change your sheet size after you've made it. You can do a custom paper size if you like. Um, one of the other important things here is first angle or third angle projection. This matters on default three view drawings. Let me, oh, let me change the scale back. One to one. Okay. The difference being, watch what happens when I do first angle and third angle. So that's what first looks like, and this is what third looks like. It shifts where the top and bottom drawings are placed. It only makes sense that the top view is above the front view, right? Uh, Europeans do it all backwards. They put the top view beneath the front view and the bottom view above the top view and right is left and left is right. Left is down and backwards and forwards. It's all backwards. Um, so we do it right, uh, which is the third, third angle view. Yep. That's how you change it. That's where it's at. Uh, one other thing that's very useful, if you want to add a new sheet, just click on this like sheet one. That's what we have, that's what we're working in right now. If you right click on that and say add sheet, you get to sheet two. 
So if you wanted to have one PDF file that contained both uh, pa both pages of the homework you're going to do, um, this is how you go about it. Uh, so you can add sheet two. It doesn't have to be the same parts on that sheet. It doesn't have to be the same views. You can go up here and mm -hmm. say insert a standard three view and browse for a completely different part. Uh, this is how you would make one PDF that contains, I don't know, the, the basic drawing of your lawnmower, the exploded view, some assembly instructions, the bill of materials, the pricing list, replacement parts with all their you know, serial numbers. You can make one PDF file that Joe Schmo could download and have all the information on your lawnmower you just designed for. So it's actually quite a capable system. They made it very easy to use. I think it's uh, very convenient. We can do in 10 minutes what AutoCAD students learned how to do all semester. I like it. So. I think I was going to sit on their exams and you just type through that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, I mean, we push you hard because we actually want you to be very capable. Uh, so SolidWorks is very, has a lot more capability right now than AutoCAD does. So that's why it's going to be great. Um, interesting note. Why don't we use SolidWorks for laying out lakes, bridges? Why don't you just draw Boomer Lake in SolidWorks and do a 2D view of that, showing where your bridge is going to be? Any guesses? It's big, right? How long is Boomer Lake? Is it like a mile long-ish? It's like a mile between whatever those roads are? I will say, just for the sake of argument, it's a mile. Um, SolidWorks maxes out at a click. I believe one kilometer is the largest dimension you can put in. It's either one or 10. But at some point, uh, because SolidWorks keeps uh, precision, it keeps precision down to like you know ten decimal places or something stupid like that. It can't handle both tiny features, making sure that things line up to the tenth decimal place, and extremely large dimensions. It has biased its computational precision down to small things. Uh, that's why if you want to make something big like a lake, or if you wanted to make an assembly showing your bridge on a lake, you could probably do it at like tenth scale. You can do it at a hundredth scale, sure. Just take your whole bridge assembly and scale it down. We showed you the scale tool. Uh, there's got to be a way to do that in assemblies too. I've never done it myself, but it seems like a fairly obvious thing you want to happen. Um, so that, that's kind of why. Uh, AutoCAD is very useful for laying out properties that are gigantic. It's for you know, very useful for making quick changes to single lines. But you can do some other things in, in uh, SolidWorks. So anyway, that's your homework for this week. You have one part given to you. I would suggest in lab. Do the drawing of that part first before you start drawing the other part. You know how to make parts. You know how to do 3D modeling. Uh, it's reinforcement because it's an exercise. It's just like working out. you got to keep using it. Um, and let the TA be there to help you in case you forget how to do any of these views. But I don't think there's anything on the second drawing we didn't cover on the first. Uh, do you guys see or do you have questions on anything in this drawing that you might not right off the bat know how to make? Yes, ma'am. Um, you can leave it. Uh, honestly, putting your name in it is always a good idea. And the way you do that, in fact, that's an excellent good reminder. If you go down here and double click, you can double click all you want, you can't change it. The way you put things in title block is to right click and say edit sheet format. This whole block of stuff down here is called the sheet format. Um, by default, you see it has a, a variable tag down here. The description of your part shows up there by default. And if I want to change that, I can go down here and delete that, put my name, whoop, caps lock, there we go, uh, I can take out this variable, because who wants that, um, so you can just change things, you can double click in this window, those text boxes already exist, you can just go zoom in here and change some of the uh, regulations on like the default uh, tolerance for a two place decimal, default tolerance for a three place decimal. <laughs> That's basically how you change all of it. But notice, while we're in editing the sheet format, everything disappeared. All the drawings are gone. I've seen some people turn white and panic on exams because everything just disappeared. They don't know what happened. But thankfully, once you right click and you go back to edit sheet, oh, I'm on sheet two. <laughs> it's like, no! Oh, then you first come in. All right. Anyway, go back to sheet one. I, you can either uh, right click and activate until you get back and forth between sheets, right click, activate, blah, 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 blah. So sheet one, when you go to, we go to um, edit sheet format, it all disappears. When you go back to edit sheet, it comes back. So yes. You can also switch between sheets and bottom line. Uh, yep, tabs. Yes. We're talking about PDFs. How do you want 
PDFs. You can. That's the nice thing about uh, drawings. One of these save options is file. Of course, save it as a solid SLD DRW, SolidWorks drawing file. So that way you can reopen it back up in SolidWorks if you need to. Go to file, save as uh, PDF. So you can save it straight to a PDF. Save it straight to that. It's really nice, lightweight. Everybody can open it. Um, yep. Any other questions? Anybody see something here that doesn't? Yes. If you save it to a PDF, can you reopen it from that PDF? Not in SolidWorks. Once you save it to a PDF, you've essentially printed it. Okay. So that's how you want to turn it? As PDF? As what? You want it to turn as PDF? Or Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe in the instructions, I, I gave, I put some instructions here. If you look, it says, I create the following drawings for both these parts. One of the parts is given to you here. Turn in two PDFs of these drawings created exactly. So two PDFs, you could combine them into one. Either way is fine. Uh, any other questions? So those of you who recorded this lecture, I think it went pretty smoothly. If you would, send me a link to it, and I'll post it up after uh, after the week. Sound good? Well, thank you very much. I'll see you guys in your lab.